कुंज बिहारी जयो राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी जय हो राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जयो राधा गोपीनाथ राधा गोपीनाथ राधे जयो श्री गोपाल श्री गोपाल श्री गोपाल जयो श्री गोपाल जयो गौर निताय गौर निताय गौर निताय जयो गौर निताय जय जय प्रभुपाद प्रभुपाद प्रभु पान प्रभु पान जय जय गुरुदेव 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 निताय गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्रीमद हे डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इस कौन बीबीटी फाउंडर आचार्य श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्रीमद हे डिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की नाम आचार्य श्रीला हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ राधा कुंड श्याम कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की ब्रजभूमि वृंदावन धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की गंगा माई की जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी की तुलसी देवी की साम वेद गौर भक्त वृंद की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असम्बल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असम्बल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असम्बल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड गौरंगा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास 
तथो जय मुधीर ये नष्ट प्रायेशु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya namo namaha Namaha pankaja nabhaya Namaha pankaja malini Namaha pankaja netraya Namaste pankajam gviye Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 52, Chapter, chapter entitled Rukmani's Message to Krishna, Verse Number 3. <coughs> Neha Sango Mukta Samshayaha Samadhaya Mana Krishna Pravishat Ganda Madanam Tapahashradhayuto Dhiro Neha Sango Mukta Samshayaha Samadhaya mana krishne Pravishat gandha madhanam Tapahashruddha yuto dhiro Nisango mukta samshayaha Samadhaya mana krishne Pravishat Gandha Madhanam Translation <coughs> No, I think somebody would like to read Tapahasraddha Yuto Dhiro Tapah Shraddha Yato Dhiro Nesangho Mukta Samshaya Samadhaya Mana Krishna Pravi Shadvanda Madhana Tapah Shraddha Yato Dhiro Nesangho Mukta Samshaya Samadhaya Mana Krishna Matajis Tapaha Shraddha Yuto Dhiro Neha Sangho Mukta Samshaya Samadhaya Mana Krishna Tapaha, in austerities, Shraddha, faith, Yutaha, having, Dhiraha, serious, Nihasanga, detached from material association, Mukta, freed, Samshayaha, of doubts, Samadhaya, Fixing in trance, 
Manaha, his mind, Krishna, upon Lord Krishna, Pravishad, he entered upon Gandamadanam, the mountain known as Gandamadana. Translation and purport by the servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Translation. <coughs> the sober king, beyond material association and free of doubt, was convinced of the value of austerity. Absorbing his mind in Lord Krishna, he came to Gandamadana mountain. Purport. The name Gandamadana indicates a place of delightful fragrances. Undoubtedly, Gandamadana was filled with the aroma of wild flowers and forest honey and with other natural scents. So, Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Sham Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitan Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahagana Lalitam Shri Vishakan Vitamsham He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bando Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyasya Krupa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Aradhya Bhagavan Rajeshatanayas Taddham Vrindavanam Ramya Kachetu Pasana Vrajavadu Vargenaya Kalpita Shreemad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam Prema Pumartho Mahan Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabho Matamidam Tatra Daruna Parang Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> First of all I seek the blessings of all the Vaishnavas the one qualified I'm just sitting here trying to fulfill a service in the absence of so many devotees and though there are so many qualified devotees present here still they have pushed me on to this place today so in gratitude and as trying to render render a simple service i'm trying to do what little i can and i sincerely seek the blessings of all the devotees for this <coughs> so today is a very auspicious day today is the day of diwali the king of festivals and I was just surprised just today morning to read a WhatsApp message President Barack Obama wishing Diwali to everybody so it has assumed an international proportion this festival has spread far and wide thanks to Srila Prabhupada for carrying the message of Lord Krishna 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Ramchandra, the world over. It was the prophecy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Prithvite Ache Yathanagara Degram Sarvata Prachara Hoive Muranam. And that was effectively carried out by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Just in the last 12 years of his life, 14 times he went round the world. Starting from an advanced age of 70 at a time when people retire and sit back, that is the time he ventured out. Simply to fulfill the desire of his Guru, not for his personal glorification. Simply to fulfill the desire of his Guru, he went to the West, gave the message of the Bhagavad Gita, gave the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and with his sincere, serious and unadulterated approach, he charged up, electrified the whole world. He lit the lamp of love in the hearts of all the people of the world and therefore ushered in Diwali in the entire world. That is his contribution of Srila Prabhupada, to which, to whom we are all grateful and today we are all assembled here sitting under his umbrella. So, let us start with our gratitude to him and to all the parampara which he represents, right from Lord Krishna to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and down the line. So, we are grateful to each one of them <coughs> for giving us this valuable knowledge which can enlighten our life and really light the lamp. We say Diwali is a festival of lights, but what kind of light? Regarding light, there is a simple incident that comes to mind. It was Dronacharya who was um, conducting classes for the Pandavas and the Kauravas. And um, so he wanted to test his students how much have they understood. So he said, I am going to arrange a project work for each one of you. I will give you the aim of the project and how to carry on the project is up to you. So he said, go to your living quarters because in those days people used to live in Gurukul so they would stay with the Guru. So he said, go to your living quarters and completely fill your room and then invite me. I would like to see how you have filled your room so depending on that, I can gauge what level of advancement you have attained. So as usual, Duryodhan was very keen to display his abilities. So he ran up to Dronacharya and said, Gurudev, please come to my room first. I would want you to come and see my room. So he said. So they went. So as soon as he opened the door, a huge bale of grass, you know, hay, they tie it in those fields, you know, huge dry, dry grass. So a huge bale of gra uh, hay, it fell out of the room. And there was absolutely no way of entering the room. It was so packed full that just by releasing the pressure on the door, the first bundle of hay fell out. There was no place to keep foot inside. Absolutely packed, tightly packed. So Duryodhan smiled. He said, see, I have completely filled the room. He said, okay. Then Arjun was there. He said, okay, Arjun, let's go to your room. So they went to Arjun's room and <coughs> Arjun opened the door of the room and he welcomed the Guru with flowers. He offered him flowers. He welcomed him. He applied scent on his hand, offered him a garland and seated him inside the room. So he said, Arjun, we went to Duryodhan's room. He has completely packed his room with hay and I have come to your room. What have you filled your room with? He said, Gurudev, I have lit this lamp over here. My room is filled with light. And I have lit the incense stick over here. And my room is filled with the fragrance of the incense stick. And Gurudev, now you are personally here. So my room is filled with your mercy. Naturally, Dronacharya was very pleased seeing how Arjun could grasp the subtleties of his teachings, whereas Duryodhan remained on the gross level and impervious to the knowledge that he wanted to give him. So that way, this festival, 
we can celebrate either like Duryodhan or like Arjun. Both ways we can celebrate. Unfortunately, the mass of the people are engaged in the ritualistic function, the ritualistic activities. So they are restricted to a social activity, to greeting, wishing and exchanging gifts, buying new clothes, eating sweet meats, but forgetting to offer the sweets to the Lord before they even eat it. Unfortunately, this is ritualistic, but it is the greatness of Srila Prabhupada that he has awakened us to spirituality and brought us from the stage, from the stage of ritualism to spiritualism. That is what the whole process of Krishna consciousness is meant to be. To raise us up from the level of ritualistic activities and to seat us on the level of spiritual activities. <coughs> so today, in today's verse, we have King Muchukunda. <coughs> of course, all of you who have been regularly hearing, you know the story, but just in order to give a short introduction, our story it starts from the battlefield where Jarasandh wants to challenge King Krishna to a fight. He wants to actually capture Mathura and now he has got Kalayavan, a very glorious fighter to defeat Krishna, one of the demonic kings, to assist him. And Kalayavan It is said was endowed with supernatural powers and he was itching for a fight with Krishna having heard the glories of this great personality and he wanted to re-establish his own glory that he is defeating a great personality but Krishna completely ignored him and ultimately he led him to the cave of Muchukunda. Muchukunda had been benedicted the person who would wake him up just by looking at that person Muchukunda would be able to burn that person to ashes he had the benediction that he would sleep for ages. And so now Krishna utilized this opportunity to bring Kalayavan face to face with Muchukunda, where Muchukunda was burnt. No, sorry, Muchukunda burnt Kalayavan because Kalayavan woke him up. And that now Kalayavan was vanquished. Then Lord Krishna revealed himself to Muchukunda, one of his very dear devotees, and benedicted him. And when he was offering him benedictions, Muchukunda refused material benedictions. And he said, I only want genuine service to your Lordship, my dear, my Lord. And there's nothing else that I want. This is a mark of a pure devotee. Even in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the Mahaprakash Leela, devotee after devotee is only begging for devotional service. They are asking for benefit for others, but never for themselves. Here, Muchukunda has been described as sober king. The sober king beyond material association and free of doubt was convinced of the value of austerity. Absorbing his mind in Lord Krishna, he came to Gandha Madana mountain. So, the focus is on the word sober. I just checked the dictionary meaning of the word sober and guess what could be the meaning? Any of you would like to make a guess? What is the meaning of the word sober? The dictionary meaning of sober is not drunk. <laughs> Oxford pocket, po Oxford dictionary, you can check it up. The meaning is not drunk. So, in material terms, when a person is intoxicated, he is unfit for legal transactions. Because whenever legal transactions are made, a specific clause is incorporated that he has signed it when he is sober and in full knowledge of the subject matter. Okay? To make it effective and applicable. So, 
so in material terms sober means not intoxicated okay but the same thing when translated into spirituality because we are spiritual beings with a human experience that is our true identity we have a human body made of flesh and blood made of matter but our true being is the soul atma and that is spirit in nature so spirit is opposite to matter so on the material platform sober means to be not intoxicated but what does it mean on the spiritual platform that means recurring referring to our true identity how would we interpret the word sober sober means there are six intoxicants which can get our spirit agitated and these six intoxicants are very nicely labeled acronymed as i pagal i stands for um illusion p stands for pride a stands for anger g stands for greed e stands for envy and l stands for lust so aadmi ko pagal bana deti hai ai pagal so these are the six intoxicants from which we have to protect the soul these are the six contaminants which can contaminate the soul so from the spiritual point of view the word sober means to be free of kaam krodh lobh moha mad and matsarya so when one is affected by these influences then one is not sober and one one is not affected by these influences then one is sober so here muchukunda has been described as a sober king sober king means who is above these influences he is not affected by these so this is what one has to strive for in one's life it is not simply to make material gain today's society prabhupad said is a misdirected civilization misdirected because people are running after money and money is honey that is the slogan for the day they get admitted to a good school good education good education means good degree good degree means good job good job means high pay high pay means a nice wife family and all the comforts that goes along with it and with this people are trying to be happy so they settle down to love things but the real goal of life is to love people and use things but today we are living a perverted life of loving things and using people so we have to set this right and that is why the path of spirituality can take us on the right lines so here is one such personality who has come to instruct us king muchukunda by his life he is teaching us that we have to be sober and we should not be intoxicated now there are six personalities who represent each one of these qualities that intoxicate a human being and these six personalities as you all know it's very elementary very basic are hiranyakashipu hiranyaksha ravan kumbhakarna dantavakra and shishupal each of these demons represents one of these qualities so hiranyaksha represents pride hiranyakashipu represents greed ravan represents lust kumbhakarna represents illusion shishupal represents envy and dantavakra represents anger but each one of them is so powerful that nobody less than the supreme lord himself can vanquish them so when these personalities make their appearance everybody else was helpless they were subject to the tyranny of this kind of personality and they prayed to the lord to help and the lord incarnated and came and vanquished them so we know that narsingha dev vanquished hiranyakashipu varaha dev vanquished hiranyaksha lord ram vanquished ravan and kumbhakarna and lord krishna vanquished shishupal and dantavakra so <coughs> na 
nothing less than the Lord Himself is required to overcome. And these six personalities, though vanquished long ago, they still linger in our hearts as personality traits. So therefore, in this age of Kali, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu incarnated. And what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? He is the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. But instead of annihilating anybody, because these six personalities have found refuge in the heart of every individual, his mission is to annihilate the tendencies in our heart. The tendency to become greedy, the tendency to become lusty, the tendency to get angry, the tendency to become proud, to become envious and to be illusioned. So, that is the greatness of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He does not annihilate the person, but he annihilates the tendencies and therefore purifies our personality. So by chanting his holy name, by listening to his pastimes and by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, we can remind ourselves again and again as to what is the true goal of human life. So, <clears throat> The life of Muchukunda. <coughs> this verse beautifully analyzes the qualities that make a person sober. These words, in this verse, actually signify how one can become sober. And it's mentioned here, austerity is the first quality one needs to cultivate in one's life. Austerity means tapasya. Austerity is the opposite of indulgence or sense gratification. Muchukunda was a king, but not a king who was out for aggrandizement, who wanted to increase his assets and his wealth. But he was one who wanted to protect the principles of dharma. He fought to safeguard the principles of religion. He called, he can be called as a Rajarishi, like in our own times, we had Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, who also fits into the classification of Rajarishi. It is said that Mother Durga personally handed him the sword. So that is the element of divinity. And more importantly for us, his interaction with Santukaram. The minute he saw this saintly personality and interacted with him, he surrendered his very life to him. And he said, I don't want to be involved in these material activities and I would dedicate myself to a spiritual life. Tukaram told him, No, my dear king, you have been assigned the duty of Akshatriya, so you remain and fight. And in your fighting is the way for you to discharge your spirituality. So therefore, this Vedic literature is very, very clear. It doesn't say that we have to give up what we have, but utilize what we have in the service of the Lord. King Muchukunda was a Maha, was a Rajarishi from another time zone. That is what we have to understand. We spoke of Shivaji Maharaj, but Muchukunda was a Rajarishi from another time zone. He was from the Satya Yuga. How long can one sleep? Yes, try sleeping. How long can you sleep? After a certain time, you have to get up, right? Now, Kumbhakarana slept for six months. The polar bear sleeps for six months. It's known as hibernation. If a human being sleeps for more than 21 hours, 24 hours, people call the doctor. It's a medical case. Something is wrong. Either he is in coma or he is very weak. He is not getting up. What has gone wrong with him? So he not only slept for years, but for lifetimes of human generations, so much so that all his contemporaries were dead and gone. Even his descendants were dead. Even the yuga in which he lived passed away. Satya yuga passed away. Treta yuga passed away. And then came Dwapar yuga. 
and well, the Lord Krishna appeared towards the end of Dwapar Yuga. And when Lord Krishna wound up his pastimes and went away, that was the end of Dwapar Yuga. So it was when Lord Krishna was present that Muchukunda was woken up. So just see, he has slept through the entire, almost beginning from Satya Yuga to Treta Yuga to Dwapar Yuga and almost at the end of Dwapar Yuga, just at the beginning of Kali Yuga. That is the time he has got up. So, what is King Muchukunda teaching us? It's very important that we understand one verse from Bhagavad Gita which explains who is a sober person. One who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws its limb within the shell is firmly fixed in consciousness. So this is one of the explanations in the Bhagavad Gita. Yada samharate chayam kurmo gani vasarvashah indriyani indriyartebhya tasya pragya pratishthita So Muchukunda represents such a personality. When Kumbhakarana was woken up from his sleep, he caused a havoc, he killed so many people, he was so angry. So Muchukunda's sleep was not in the mode of ignorance. Kumbhakarana's sleep was in the mode of ignorance. But Muchukunda was like a tortoise, he withdrew his limbs from this material world, he went inside, just like a tortoise becomes absolutely still in the face of danger and withdraws itself, it was completely withdrawn. And he woke up when the Lord personally came to wake him up. So, Ravana also came face to face with Krishna. Duryodhan also with Lord Ramachandra. Duryodhan came face to face with Krishna. But what was the reaction of these personalities coming face to face with the Lord? The reaction was they challenged the Lord. That shows their consciousness. But what was the reaction when Muchukunda came face to face with Krishna after such a long sleep? When he woke up, his heart melted. He expressed his gratitude to the Lord. He was so thankful to the Lord. And he was so happy on seeing the Lord. It was the fulfillment of his life. It was the achievement of his life. It was the crowning glory of his life. So. He celebrated his ability to see the Lord. So actually seeing the Lord needs to prepare one's consciousness. It's only one, when one is fully conscious, once one's consciousness is fully prepared, then seeing the Lord makes any sense. Otherwise, it can have a reverse effect. So one of the qualities is tapasya. And here it is mentioned that King Muchukunda, austerity, is walking after seeing the Lord. He doesn't retire. He says, now the goal of my life is achieved. Now what am I supposed to do? He takes the instruction of the Lord to heart. The Lord says that since as a Kshatriya you have killed people, so you have to atone for it. You have to perform austerities. So you go and perform those austerities. Taking these instructions of the Lord to the heart, he immediately starts walking to the north, to Badrik Ashram, and there he wants to prepare himself to perform severe austerities. So these austerities that he is doing, he doesn't say, having seen the Lord, I should be celebrating, why should I be performing austerities? He says, this is the instruction of the Lord given to me. So he takes up these austerities with gratitude. This is what we learn from the life of great devotees. <coughs> Shraddha, faith. He had complete faith in the words of the Lord. He did not question that now that you have enabled me to see you, why do you send me away? No. When the instruction was given, he had complete and explicit faith in discharging the instructions of the Lord and he set out to do that. Shabari is a classic example of faith in the Vedic literature. Matangarishi, he told her, Lord Ram will come and 
you have to offer him fruits from a young girl she grew into an old woman but every day she waited with the same enthusiasm for lord ram to appear that is the greatness of a devotee implicit faith in the words of guru and this is unflinching faith in the words of guru and sadhu and shastra is what is required to bring one closer to god faith is like the slender string which can connect the two impossibles on the one hand we put in effort and we don't see any tangible result in our day to day life and sometimes we tend to think is it really going to take me anywhere what am i doing am i wasting my time but if one has faith in the words of the wise and one continues to it a time will come when the result will manifest itself and that comes by the mercy of the lord so damodar lila also teaches us your effort and the lord's mercy are two ingredients which go to make up the success formula so therefore this faith is like the bonding factor in between you have two bricks but in between you have a layer of cement this cement will bond the two bricks and ultimately make a big wall similarly the bricks of our effort have to be bound by faith in order to create a structure that will make our life worth living so that is how we have to endeavor in our life with faith so when we have this faith it can really give us the ultimate result and that is god realization and self realization to know the spirit apart from matter otherwise we are entangled in matter we have to come out of this material entanglement and rise to the level of spirit the other quality that is mentioned over here is giving up material association this has been stressed again and again in the vedic literature the more we are entangled in material association we are dragged further and further down into material consciousness it is only therefore here it is mentioned the word nissango mukta samshaya so he is giving up all this material association and having seen the lord he starts walking towards the himalayas to the gandamadana mountains to sit down and perform austerities and seclusion rising about doubts that is conviction is mukta samshaya it is very interesting to note that in the beginning when there was creation brahma was the first created being and the only asset that brahma had at that time was the knowledge of the vedas and even at that time when that was the only asset available there was a demon who came to steal that vedas and it is we have the story of kaitab and uh, who's the other one madhu madhu and kaitab the story of madhu and kaitab they came to steal the vedic knowledge from brahma so they are actually demons of doubt this doubt is actually a demon so whenever we begin to doubt the process whenever we begin to doubt the validity of the scriptures whenever we begin to doubt the existence of god whenever we begin to doubt the instructions of the spiritual master whenever we begin to doubt the integrity of the sadhus that is surely our way to downfall so we have to rise above doubts this is what muchukunda is signifying rise above doubts immediately he accepts and immediately he begins to implement directly so we come to the temple we hear the lecture but the focus of all the lecture is simply to make one chant so until and unless we start the chanting process that means we have not implemented the process in our life and it's only when we start chanting and follow the regulative principles as given in the shastras then we make tangible progress in our life and absorption samadhi complete absorption means focusing to the exclusion of everything else one and only one so 
that f- that point is also again and again stressed in the bhagavad gita that ekehi kuru nandana single pointed devotion single pointed attention to the service of the supreme lord so this way we see the verse of today it explains the meaning of the word sober the qualities that are required are tapah that means austerity faith to rise above doubt to give up doubt and to be fixed in concentration one single minded single pursuit single aim and to give up the association of non devotees this way we can come out of the intoxication of material life and be fixed in devotion to the supreme lord and these same qualities which he is implementing in his own life muchukunda is teaching us by his own example how we can shape our lives so as to offer our entire life as a burning lamp at the lotus feet of the supreme lord as an offering of love as an offering of our heart to the lord and light up our existence and light up the entire creation so on this note i think we can stop today being the day of diwali let us offer the sincere love of our heart as a lamp to the lord and make this truly a festival of lamps hari krishna thank you very much